Good morning gardening friends. Welcome to Tea Time Tuesday. I'd like to walk you around the garden. I'm Lark and I'm in Wisconsin. So grab a cup of tea or beverage of choice, sit back, and let's walk together. This is the front of my yard, the area where I have a gate and an arbor. This is an aster that will bloom later, tiny white flowers. I, I think it's wild. And blue lobelia. I started talking about that last week. Great blue lobelia. Gloriosa daisies. All round color. Corabels. So that's mostly perennials in there. There's even a lamb's quarter in there. And an annual. Marigold. And then my William Baffin rose. And do you want to see what's on there? Japanese beetles. I'm going to knock them off. Can't squish them. So there they go. They will go to something else or come back. Oh, they're going up to the top rose bud. Okay, so this is my arbor. And I told you Sweet Autumn died back, a Sweet Autumn Clematis. And it's coming over the fence now. It's on the other side. Died back to the ground. My bike. Looking lovely. Minimal money. Swedish ivy. A begonia. Perennial of Corydalis with the yellow flower. And then I did earlier in the season, can you see the dark blue? Lobelia. Too hot for it now. I also had that lobelia in this basket, but it died back. Hyacinth bean vine. Pretty foliage and gets a purple lavender type flower on it. That reseeded from last year, so there's only a couple up here. And it's going up the arbor. Now, whether it amounts to anything before the first frost, we'll see. Just color, doodads I save, and I made the sphere. Marigold, oh no, no, morning glory, heavenly blue. It always blooms late here in my Wisconsin garden, always. But I'll need color late, so that's a good thing. Potentella's gold finger. Doing good. At least the ones that are in the sun. As this maple tree gets bigger, it casts more shadow around the deck. So we used to have uh, them all around the deck, and the ones that don't get as much sun have less flowers and floppy foliage. And then uh, Lantana is in my uh, flower box, and it's starting to put on new growth. I keep it deadheaded, and you can see where I cut back flowers. Right in here, you'll see new growth, and it'll bloom later then. Have any of you ever grown Lantana from seed? Because... These seeds here, which I usually deadhead, but I see one now, turn black, and then I take it, they're ready to fall off, and you can plant them from seed. But have you had any luck? Probably people in the southern states. Keep the cosmos deadheaded, and they'll keep blooming and blooming. And I like the idea I used with uh, miracles on the bottom because otherwise they get leggy and yucky looking on the bottom, especially in containers, okay? So these marigolds uh, disguise it a bit. Cannas have not bloomed yet, but I grow mostly for the foliage.
Let's want to go up on the deck. See what's going on up here. Oh, a few containers that I planted out this year. Cosmos and uh, the red. Uh, oh, I think it's a penstemon grass, fountain grass, and the ivy. Little maintenance on there. Some marigolds in there. Colored foliage, important. Oh, ladybug. You're a good guy. And then in early spring or late spring, I told you that I planted this here to give. Okay, look, look up and over this. See the yuckiness back there? Sprinkling cans, hoses. Well, this is where we sit. So now it's disguising it. So it's doing exactly what I wanted it to do. So that was a success. Again, I should have put marigolds around this bottom. The chest here is kind of hiding it, but I think next year marigolds will go down there. Sprinkling can with marigolds, the uh, Swedish ivy, and sage, Victoria. That'll last until a hard frost. Coleus in the container. I don't know, remember the name. But instead of letting it grow straight up, I'm bringing it through the birdcage some. And let the lime green one go up. Aloes. Just my house plants I bring out here, but I do use aloe daily on my skin. And no, I don't scrape it and refrigerate it and all that. I just cut a leaf off and then I'll put it in a baggie in my bathroom. And I only cut a chunk off the last for a matter of days. This is donkey tail sedum. And I'm getting sick of bringing it in and out. My jade. Now, some of you who follow me know that uh, this jade, I almost had all the foliage off of it. I wanted to uh, liven it up a little, and I wanted the uh, stalks to become thicker and less leaves. So it worked great. I like the architectural look to it. Some other succulents I have. This is in my old potty chair I had as a kid. So I just plant in it. Makes my mama happy. That needs to be worked on, cut back. And then more sedum. They never did get around to cutting her bangs. Her dreadlocks are fine. And fire sticks. Pencil cactus. When the nights start getting colder, this will be more stressed and it will turn uh, orangish red, especially the new growth. And then my mother plant of flapjacks. That comes in too. And these potentillas get enough sun here that they're blooming decently yet. A few daylilies hanging on. Annabelle, burgundy perilla, branch coneflower, fleabane, oh, and the first of an aster, wild aster, light lavender, and I'm letting the mullen go to seed. I'm going to spread some of the seed 
back behind the perilla. Another pretty delicate wild flower or a weed as some of you might call it. You can see the turtle head is putting on its buds which gives later color. And this is a branch cone flower only about 18 inches high because it got whacked down or the deer ate it. Autumn Joy Sedum starting to put on its seed head. Why do I have ants on me? Little tiny black ones. Ooh, there's a good stand of lamb's quarters for tomorrow's breakfast. All back there, I see. I have to check out the nettle, too. I'm sure it's reseeded. Lamb's quarters and phlox. Lamb's quarters is backlit. Oh, the, uh, the spider whip there, the spider just took off. I can't see the nettle from here. Little bit of the another daylily. Now this is later in the season for daylily, so they're doing pretty good. Fall blooming. I get this wrong every time. It's snake rot black. Used to be or is now called black cohosh. But this one's chocolate. And uh, it's losing its dark foliage. And as soon as it starts flowering, it will get more green foliage. Oh, it's back here. White flax is still blooming a little. Of course, the um, trumpet vine is still blooming. That gets cut back severely. It's my trumpet vine tree. And I'll show you again the, the vine. That's a patio umbrella in there with it. So you can, the dimension, mm, let's see, what's a patio umbrella? Two inches maybe? And that's wider. So tree-like. Okay, shade garden. Let's go this way today. Feverfew, if you have this and it's going to seed, drop it and sprinkle its seeds around. Then you'll have more next year. Simisifuga hillside black beauty. Pretty foliage. And it gets this spiky flower. It'll be kind of a pinkish white, but very fragrant. Very fragrant. And lots of blue lobelia down here. Now, how do you like that yellow with the blue? Isn't that pretty? Of course, you guys know that as a weed, wood sorrel, but edible and good, kind of lemony tasting. Mm-hmm, tart. Pretty foliage of Solomon seal that the deer ate. Ate off the tops. At least they didn't go down to the bottom. Hosta garden. 
needing work. But still we've had steady rain, so it's looking okay. As the ferns, too. They're looking good for August. A lot of times they go dormant. When I go down there with you, I talk about that hydrangea, climbing hydrangea that's going up that tree. Now, can you see from here how it arches? So I'm letting the hydrangea just naturally climb up that cherry tree. So it arches over the path down there. In one year for somebody else, that will have a pretty white arch in spring. Climbing hydrangea. Japanese maple, some of you ask if I have them. Yep, that one is blood good and it died back to the ground. But it's coming back and it's nice because my dad had given it to me. So now that he's gone, it helps me think of gardening with him, with mom. My mom's still here though. Isn't that pretty backlit? The Joe Pie. Wow, the bumblebees are just loving it, and so are the um, monarchs. This is fireworks, goldenrod. Pygmy Barberry with the Black Eyed Susans. That nasty plumy grass. Can you see it there? Again, it's sunny out, so I'm not real good at seeing what you're seeing. I suppose if I leave those seed heads on, they are going to multiply even quicker because they're a runner also. See how I leave the perilla come out uh, up around some of these other perennials like the great blue lobelia and then what I can do is just pull out the perilla as I want the lobelia to show off more. Okay. Finches are starting to really eat at these purple cone flowers. The chore for one of these days soon is uh, cutting back the uh, tiger lilies, so the goldenrod back there and the flocks show off more. So I'll just come back and trim them and let the uh, trimmings drop to the ground, feed the ground. Now the fire uh, cracker, no, fireworks goldenrod is a runner. So 
it can go crazy. Oh, the tiger sw swallow butterfly is out. What is this grass, you guys? Is that oats? And I probably should get that out too before it starts drying and dropping. My hubby has been helping a lot this year in the garden. He's been weeding for me because he knows that I've had it. And he wants to stay here as long as possible. <gasps> He's probably uh, praying that Three Pillars, the retirement place we're going to, doesn't call us with a, our room that we want. Isn't that pretty back there with the flax? I haven't even deadheaded or sprayed it for powdery mildew. It is amazing. And this year we had so much heat and humidity. How am I doing here? About 22 minutes. See how dry it is? Perilla is very drought tolerant little water will perk that up real quick. So it's hot out, plus it's under this maple tree. Casting a lot of shade and has lots of roots. We have a hibiscus blooming today. I think I showed you the buds last week. Here it is. Is it super, super pretty? No. It's a common hibiscus, but it's from one of my aunts that's no longer here. So that's cool. Switchgrass. No, no, Shenandoah. Yeah, Shenandoah switchgrass. Little burgundy on there. But I don't know, is it picking up the tiny little seed heads on it? Pretty uh, come fall when um, the morning dew is frozen. Pretty, pretty. Oh, look at Rose Campion. Still blooming, but you can see the seed heads. I am leaving dry up, so I have more seeds dropping. More turtle head getting ready to pop. Right there, seed heads on it. No, no, not seed head, flower heads. You know, you guys, I'm really happy that you come and walk with me. You're kind of like a weekly neighbor coming over, and we're just, except I'm doing all the talking. If you comment, it's kind of like chatting. But you're like a neighbor coming over, and we're just walking around and talking about gardening, whatever's cropping up in our lives. Oh, dry under here. Now that's a go crazy grass back there, Miss Canthus. And I do have galvanized steel that was supposed to hold it in, but it did hop over. So come spring, I'm going to be taking some of it out because my roof, barn roof vent is back there and you can't even see it. You can maybe see the blue tip of it a little. And that's where my puppy is buried. So we got to clean that up. That'll be a pretty feather grass, though, in, in a, oh, not long, probably a couple weeks, it'll be starting. Oh, the bog garden. I have my pumpkins down there, I told you. And I think I showed you, too, last week. But, oh, my gosh, are they growing? Oh, my gosh, I think one of you is having a pumpkin contest. I should check that out again. Well, it's not going to be as big as some of these that you grow for a huge variety. Cause, but these weren't huge varieties. Rockstar was one. 
and just a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin. That is the Scarlet Runner bean. There is the bean. Can you see it hanging? Makes it easy to pick. And then it has the, perp the orange flowers on it. Quite pretty. Anyways, it's the entrance and the exit of my veggie garden. And it's there's a morning glory on there too, heavenly blue. Jalen, thank you for the sign. My sweet little granddaughter. Well, actually, she's now big, much taller than me. But she's still sweet as ever, made me that sign. So thank you for visiting me each and every week. And sometimes you don't come. No big deal. You know, maybe I get bored with it too, but it's mine. So we're fighting blight here. But it's still giving me tomatoes. And I get in there once, at least once, twice a week to um, cut off the blight leaves. In the beginning it was more often, but now since I have all this yucky obstacles here, so my raccoon or whoever is eating my garden has a harder time getting in there. An Italian roaster. Is that showing up in there? It's on a red board. So that's what I do. I put all these twigs and saplings in here so they don't eat off the tops of my peppers. That's why they're late flowering. Oh, I'll back up and you can see this. Pretty border planted in the holes of the concrete block. I have um, sweet basil and uh, peppermint, Reuben basil or opal, I can't remember. I think that's Reuben because I was surprised it stayed so purple. Sometimes it turns green. More basil, carrots behind it, and some green onions. My oregano coming back. I'll get two cuttings out of it. Sage, common sage. Verbena, Buenos Aires, just because. Butterflies like it a lot. Bees like it. Then some Italian flat leaf parsley. Spearmint on this other end. More basil in the garden. Tomatoes are doing okay. Enough to feed us and share. Hoop House is doing fantastic. And again, you don't get to see it in there. But believe me, I have my greens every morning. So I pick weekly about or twice a week. Because it's a chore for me to get in there. Holy basil gets picked today. I was waiting for the other stuff to dry downstairs so I have more room. I'll give you a look of downstairs one day too. Maybe on uh, Tips and Technique Thursday. So this is Verbena and Gloriosa Daisy and um, Calendula all bordering this garden. This is the holy basil I cut about 10 days ago. Coming back I'll get at least three cuttings from it. So that'll get me through the year, and I have about um, those institutional size glass jars that you get like at the deli, or they used to have them in glass. Well, I have those, and I, I will have two of those jars full of holy basil. Oh, Malabar spinach is coming nicely now since it's really hot. Isn't that pretty? Red stems climbing up the greenhouse frame. Oh, it's hot for the cucumber. And the raspberries are putting on some really nice growth. So thanks guys. Take care. Love seeing